You don't sing a song to free Africa all now. Mm. Our music has everything to do with Africa. Right. We don't we don't dichotomize. We don't separate ourselves from Africa. No right. point, no time, no day. Now, if you look in sub-Saharan Africa, we see Africa rising up. Mm-hmm. The brain of Africa has become awakened from Niger go right through. So we cannot continue in the trajectory like we don't know who we are. Right. And our music cannot continue to be uninspiring. Right. Simple. Right. Reggae right. music come from Africa. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Buju Banton, Jamaican reggae legend. Now, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, Buju Banton had an interview, an interview that went over two hours, and he spoke about very many things. And now there is a part that he touched on Afrobeats. But we have people who are bad-minded, who wants to, you know, like, put Africa against our reggae religion. Now, Buju Banton, after speaking, he talked well of Afrobeats, and he criticized Afrobeats in a positive way. He said that Afrobeats should not be singing songs to uplift Africa, songs that are going to sensitize our people because Africa is suffering. He needs Afrobeat legends, Afrobeat artists to talk much and more about the sufferings and things that are going on in Africa. Let me play you the whole video thereafter we are going to discuss. Right. Tell me one Afrobeat song that can uplift us. Uplift us, take us from... Kenya is suffering. People of... The young men of Kenya are revolting. South Africa is on a, um, Sudan, South Sudan. You name it. But which one of these songs can I relate to for a peace of mind to tell me that I'm in the struggle and we are going to be better in the struggle and even though the struggle is hard, we're going to overcome. Tell me. I went to Africa in 1991 and I spent like three weeks Constant at the universities, in Kenya? under Boabab trees, in Kenya, that's educating wonderful. people from Ghana, right. all over the continent about reggae music and dancehall. But I was happy when they came to their senses to realize that music is the, the bridge that's going to connect us. But what I was disappointed in, they didn't try to connect with Jamaica the roots. They connect with everyone else mm-hmm. except us. You talking about Afrobeats? Yes. Okay, okay, continue. I'm sorry. So they connected with everyone else except us. But when we look at what they're doing, their music is not free in Africa. It's far cray. <laughs> I didn't know what the music say. need to free Africa. If I am all the way in Jamaica and my and my country and my people fight for free your continent with word, sound, and power, and you have the ability now, and all you're singing is fuckery. You don't sing a song to free Africa all now. Mm. We well, need them bringing this to the forefront of your mind, but we desire more from them. Ooh, you want man. the money? Go get it. But what's gonna be said about you later on? And your posterity. You didn't make any impact. So, reggae music still stands predominant. It is still the king's music. Yes. Our music has everything to do with Africa. We don't don't dichotomize. We don't separate ourselves from Africa. No point, no time, no day. Now, if you look in sub-Saharan Africa, we see Africa rising up. Mm-hmm. The brain of Africa has become awakened from Niger go right through. So we cannot continue in the trajectory like we don't know who we are. Right. And our music cannot continue to be uninspiring. Right. Simple. Right. Reggae right. music come from Africa. Yeah. The drum is just that we get the a drums. different way of speaking and our idioms and the way our cadence come across is much different. Right. Because we're able to bend words and we don't deal with English. We deal with outlish. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we discuss what Buju Banton said about African music and Africa as a continent. A few days ago, a Nigerian artist who sings Afrobeats, is known as Mr. Flavor, was asked about what Buju Banton said. And Mr. Flavor was in support of Buju Banton. It is a coincidence because Nigerians have taken over Afrobeats. And if you look at the top 10 Afrobeat musicians, they come from Nigeria. So Mr. Flavor being interviewed about the sentiments that Buju Banton made was a very good idea. Now, I'm going to play you the video. And Mr. Flavor admits, and he says that what Buju Banton said, you know, is the truth. And he calls him a legend. And he says that even him, to be honest, he does it for money. He's singing for money. And he says that the children of today, the kids of today in Africa, if you don't bring vibe, they're not going to listen to you. 
Mr. Flavor confessed that even him as an Afrobeat musician, he does it for the vibe and money. And he said that whatever Bujubantun said, that is the truth. So let's look at Mr. Flavor and look at the interview that he did and listen to him before we come back. From Buju Banton's interview? Yeah, I saw it. I yeah. saw that. Uh, how do hmm. you feel about him saying that Afrobeats doesn't pay any homage to reggae music and we don't make uplifting music and that, you know, reggae music would make music for Africans to free mm. us? First of all, Buju Banton is someone I respect so much. Mm -hmm. like, during their time, it was different. They've already done that. Mm. In the world we live in today, you come with that message, you're not even going to be heard. There's so much going on. Yeah. The kids of today, they don't want stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't yeah. want too much talk. They yeah. want to vibe. That's they, right. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even me, I had to tap into that. I don't want to be singing at this stage of my career, I'm mm. a baller. No, yeah. I could be singing, take it easy, Ooh. whatever you do. Hold it strong, oh. you know. Cheers. I could, yeah. Yeah. If I do that, I'm not gonna get, you know. I got kids to feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or family. Yeah. I also think there's a point. Mm. You know, he's trying to awaken our spirit. I think so. Sometimes listen to what like a legend is saying. You might not get it straight away, but if you look deep, mm. the future, Omwai, our children, mm. yeah. what's we gonna leave for them? Yeah, what future mm. do they? Yeah, have? a lot is going on. Africa needs help. Mm. If we turn everything into vibes, how long is that going to go? Mm. That is true. Where's yeah. the breaking point? Even when he said that, he kind of like... Oh, well, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. like, Babola, Babola, how much is money? Mm. Till when? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Ladies and gentlemen, I know most of you might be asking themselves why I would come up with this video. Why did I decide to make this video? I've seen many videos trending online in YouTube, you know? And they're trying to paint Buju Banton in a negative way. That Buju Banton is against Afrobeat, which is not the case. And I have to come out clearly and sensitize my people. Because we've got bad-minded people who want separators, you know, who want to benefit from the separation that they're trying to create with videos that have been, you know, blown out of proportion. Because you can see clearly, Buju Banton, in fact, is angry is calling upon african artists to sing uplifting songs and even when the interview starts he's saying that could you name for me any afrobeat that can uplift us and buju banton is pointing out clearly that a few days ago kenyans were protesting sudan is in problem south africa is in problem africa is in problem it is time for african afrobeats you know like african musicians artists to take this opportunity, sing uplifting songs, songs that are going to uplift your people. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that the Nigerian, you know, musician, Mr. Flavor, also comes out and agree with what Bujubanton said, it shows us how Bujubanton, the Jamaican reggae legend, loves Africa, and we are not going to tolerate the bad-minded people who want separators. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to analyze what really Buju Banton meant. There is a point where he's saying he went to Africa. Now, this is a guy who has come to Africa for more than three weeks. He said it in the interview. And he was educating Africans about reggae music. He was ready to share with his fellow brothers and sisters about a music that they are doing so well. Now, how could someone who came to our continent, to the motherland, to try and educate our people about reggae music, be jealous of Afrobeat? In fact, Buju Banton wants Afrobeat, you know, to go higher. But he's saying it is time for Africans to also inspire, you know, the people, the young children, and sing songs that are, that are uplifting you. Ladies and gentlemen, you also say, that their music is not freeing up Africa. He's not saying that Afrobeat has anything bad, but he's saying he also needs music that are freeing Africa. Let's be honest, reggae has always supported Africa. They have sung about the struggle that we African people, we are facing. So Buju Banton is saying, our music is not freeing up Africa. He needs a strong Africa. He needs Afrobeat, 
that is going to uplift the younger generation. So ladies and gentlemen, if you analyze this interview, you're going to realize that the Jamaican reggae artist has everything, you know, everything positive towards the African family and African fraternity. You also said that you've got the ability now because Jamaica did it. Jamaica has been singing about Africa. So it's telling Africa, Banner Boy, Whiskey, Davido, Mr. Flavor, Tiwa Savage, Chidima, all of you, Diamond. The other time you say about Koma Sava. Koma Sava is a French word. Are you singing to the French people? Come home, speak about the struggle that you people are facing. Because Jamaica, reggae music from Jamaica has done it for you people. But right now, you've got the limelight. Banner Boy, you are known in the whole world. I know you're singing well, you know, but could you also try and show the world, you know, the plight of your people, inspire the younger generation? There is a point that he said, it is not about money. It is not about money. After you've got all the money, what will happen in the, you know, in the next generation? The good thing, Mr. Flavor also says that, you know, he's got kids to feed. So this is a confirmation that what Bujubantun said is true. Afrobeat should not, be a, uh, should not just be about the money, not about the vibe, but look at the future generation. Now there is a time he said that our music, you know, has got everything to do with Africa. Reggae music has everything to do with Africa. So Bujubantun, again he's saying, you know what? In Jamaica, the music we sing also is connected with Africa. So Buju Banton is not a head of Afrobeat or any African person. So those people who are, coming, uh, who are coming up, you know, with funny videos, who wants, you know, like to separate us, we are seeing you, and you cannot separate us from, you know, from our people, which can't happen because we know that whatever Buju Banton did or said was well meant for the African people because he's calling upon our artist, you know, our celebrity, Talk about the suffering, you know, the plight of your people. So Buju Banton has also bigged up Africa. He's not a hater. He's not a hater. He has said that he has recognized the drums from Africa. And he's saying reggae music is from Africa. So he cannot come and start hating on Afrobeats. And Buju Banton is a big legend. The other time when he went to ESB Arena, you saw... Within, within one hour, 18,000 seats had been sold. So he's not trying to compete with Afrobeat, but he's trying to educate our people. It is time for us to sing songs that are going to free Africa and uplift our people. He also, big Africa, and said that Africa is rising up. Africa is rising up. So the point, or when Africa is rising up, we also need music that are going to uplift us. And he said... You cannot separate him from Africa. He has been in Africa. He has educated Africans on reggae. And he's just trying to point out clearly that Africans, you've got a chance now. The whole world is listening to you. Sing songs that are going to uplift your people. Sing songs that when your people listen to, they are inspired. Ladies and gentlemen, lastly, before I finish, I'd like to, you know, talk about three things. From the interview of Buju Banton, I came to realize that you cannot turn Africans against Jamaican people. You can never turn African Africans against Jamaicans. Now, in one of the YouTube channels, you know, where people are discussing uh, what Buju Banton said about Afrobeats, there is one person, an African person, who said something about Jamaica. The way Jamaicans used to sing about the liberation and uplifting of Africa, when I was a kid growing up in Africa, I used to think Jamaica was a country in Africa. Until I grew up and learned geographically, I learned it is in the Caribbean. Much respect to Jamaica. So you can see that you can never put Africans against Jamaica. So even those people are trying to come up with funny videos, you know, to make us think that Buju Banton is a head of Afrobeats, we are not going to accept that. 
Number two, I've also come to realize that Jamaicans genuinely want the betterment for Africa. Because for Buju Banton to come home and criticize Afrobeats positively, he wants all the best for us. He's trying to tell us, inspire your people the way like he do be did, you know. So you can see that genuinely Buju Banton will represent, you know, music that comes from Jamaica and is trying to tell us that he means well for us. And you can conclude that Jamaicans genuinely mean well for Africa. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand that there are people who don't want us, you know, from the African side to connect again with our Caribbean brothers. That's why they're going to come up with funny videos, you know, in the social media that are going to make us say, you know what, these people don't like us. We have to be keen, you know, whenever we listen to any person coming up with videos, we have to know whatever he's trying to talk about. Because some people might be trying to make us be against each other. We are now looking out for these people and separators. We can't allow ourselves to be separated again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are one people. And we welcome criticism. Even the Bible says that the truth shall always set you free. It might be bitter, but it's the best thing. So when Buju Banton came out, he's our brother. Because that is an interview, he even said that he's from Igbo, Nigeria. You know, he calls himself an Africa. Culture Joseph Hills. You know, there's a song he has sung and he has said that I am a humble Africa. So ladies and gentlemen, we cannot allow anybody or anyone who wants us to think that our brothers from Caribbean has, you know, negativity towards us. No. Whenever they criticize us, we have to look at it positively. Because someone who loves you will always try to criticize you so that you can change for better. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are new in this channel, this channel is called African Walk. Our aim is to spread love, which comes from a song that was done by Bob Marley, One Love. Our main inspirations come from Marcus Gave, who wanted to see Africans in the continent, out of the continent, and all other parts of the world come together. I believe that the more we share these videos and we try to talk about love, we are going to come together as a people. For now, my people, goodbye. Let's talk tomorrow, same time, same place. Little more.